Uh, his role is marketing science at the Iconic, which is literally an Iconic uh, fashion website, isn't it, amongst other things. Um, my daughters would be delighted, and if I could take decent selfies, um, I'd be over there with you right now. Um, Vivek's talk is Expertise as a Microservice, Embracing Human-Centred AI. Now, a very comprehensive explanation of what the talk's going to be about, so I won't completely deliver it or I'll steal all your thunder, but over the years, businesses have come to realise that to have amazing growth and profit profitability, it usually boils down to delivering great customer experiences. Solving this problem of scale as your customers grow is the promise and vision of AI-enabled automation. Yet, even after making significant investments in AI automation, companies are finding that the initial payoff is often modest. And that's because of other underlying issues. What if there was a way to enhance the reach and scale of your human staff using AI such that you could augment, not automate? So that you could retain, not replace the expertise of your business users. So Vivek's talk is about a unique slant of AI called human-centred AI, with both humans and machines working together to solve the same problem. Vivek, welcome to the stage. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Can you guys hear me out at the back? Okay. Beautiful. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here. I am Vivek. I'm a data scientist, and I develop machine learning algorithms at the Iconic. When I read books or blog posts about AI and automation, I'm beginning to see a consistent trend. Computers now beat humans at chess, poker, go, and in the stock markets. They don't get tired, they don't fall sick, and they deliver insights and intelligence in a matter of seconds. So when businesses look to AI and automation, they usually look at it as a way to save costs. The question in their minds is something on the lines of how can we build AI to automate the expertise of our staff so that we can eventually replace them? This talk is not about that. I want to show you that while designing customer-facing AI solutions, human ingenuity and machine intelligence are not really interchangeable. In fact, they're not even comparable. So while designing AI, having humans and machines work together and utilize their unique strengths to solve a customer problem often results in the best outcomes for your client. This talk is about how you may define a unique flavor of AI called human-centered artificial intelligence, or HCAI, so that you can reframe that previous question and we ask ourselves, how can we augment our staff and achieve the scale so that we can retain their expertise and not end up replacing them. Investing in AI for automation as well as retaining staff seems a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? Feels like we're doubling up our costs. I want to show that if designed properly, this value proposition gives you the best of both worlds. So your AI projects that used to take weeks or months now ship quicker as well as your, your staff is more productive than ever before. And we do this by hooking on to yet another relatively newish trend uh, in the world of software development called microservices, which turns out to be work really, really well with HCAI. But first, let's get a feel from the room this afternoon. Can I get a show of hands who here works in a customer-facing role uh, or maybe in a startup or, a, or, or, an, or, a, or an employee which direct to customer? The B2Cs? Okay, okay. That's over 50%. That's, that's great. That's nearly about 60, 60% that I could get. That's great because I think HCAI or human-centered AI works best and is the best way to inject artificial intelligence into your startup or your product if you're solving a direct customer problem, especially involving human interactions. As consumers, we've come to expect great customer service for, and, and a customer experience from the businesses that we interact with. These experiences are typically delivered by who I call the everyday expert. Now, by expert, I don't mean the $3,000 a day power suit clad consultant. What I mean is your staff who helps you run your business or your startup day in and day out. 
These could be the barista that you employ in your cafe. These could be your call center employees or your marketing managers. On the one hand, these everyday experts come with a certain intuition about your business. They're capable of ingenuity, of judgment, creativity, and empathy. But on the other hand, your staff is only human, with human constraints. As your company grows rapidly and acquires more customers, your everyday experts can't keep up with the growing demand. So, you look towards automated solutions. Solving a company's problem of scale is the very promise of AI-based automation. And why not? Because once you deploy a machine learning algorithm, it is now able to automate the business decision making for hundreds and thousands of your customers. And it does this by pattern matching your clients' behaviors and your needs. But when businesses optimize only for scale, they begin to miss out on the human creativity and empathy, which is also important when dealing with the needs of your real human customers. Another big problem is that machine learning algorithms don't have a reliable way of dealing with data it hasn't seen before. As your algorithm developer spends weeks and months trying to fix the edge cases, trying to get it to deploy into the real world, you begin to wonder if your investment in AI is really paying off. Well, you're not alone in feeling this way. Just last month, MIT Sloan and the Boston Consulting Group carried out a survey to nearly 2,500 executives about the value and impact of AI within their business. Over 40% of them have made significant investments within AI, yet, seven in 10 companies reported little to no impact from their AI investment in AI projects so far. The promise of human-centered AI is this very balance between AI level scale as well as human level creativity. By designing AI systems with both the human expert as well as your machine learning algorithm, simultaneously working on solving the same customer problem, your algorithm de developer can now delegate the complex customer touch points to the human in the loop, effectively becoming a safety net against the edge cases and the outliers. Now, we can utilize the machines for what they're great at, and that is to crunch data and come up with unco and uncovering patterns at scale. Humans and machines are a winning combination when working together. But there's a caveat. The combination yields amazing results, but some problems are better suited for this than others. Also, being relatively new in the market, this way of architecture doesn't really have a playbook for, for, for companies to inject this into their business. Hopefully at the end of this talk, you'll be as convinced as I am about what kind of approaches work and what don't. So, say you're a startup with a traditional AI solution to your customer's problem. So for example, you could be a WebMD type of a chatbot interface, uh, uh, providing medical diagnoses, or let's say you're an e-commerce website with a search and recommendation problem. Before we answer how to apply human-centered AI, it's useful to understand what the traditional approach to building AI is. So in traditional AI, there's two principal actors in this system. To your right is the customer, and to the left is the AI algorithm, the machine learning algorithm. This process looks overtly simple, but this simplicity hides a tremendous amount of complexity and gotchas because of which you some, sometimes the investment in AI don't pay off the way you want it to. For the machine to be able to make these recommendations and take action, it needs to be trained on enormous amounts of data. Once the first version of the model is out, it then goes into this time-consuming loop of testing and validating for robustness and edge cases. For example, if your algorithm is that WebMD type interface, before you release this chatbot into, for real human patients to use, you want to be absolutely sure that the AI algorithm has been filtered out for all of the false positives and the false negative types of errors.
But the way you implement human-centered AI is quite different. We can already acknowledge that understanding a customer's intentions the way a person would is not really the strength of a machine. So we put our customer experience first and we sever the direct connection between the machine and the customer. We'll let the algorithm do what it does best and that is analyze billions of data points and come up with, and uncover patterns at an internet level scale. In addition to this, we will introduce a different type of a neural network, one that is very good at making sense of unstructured data. And that is the mind of your staff, your everyday expert. With this new actor interacting with customers in your system, your system now has the ability to, un to understand all kinds of contextual and personalized uh, uh, understanding of your customer, so that's so that it can give better recommendations. In this concept diagram, that stream of blue that you see here represents the stream of human conversation between your everyday expert and the customer. So this is different to just the explicit feedback that you would be getting with a traditional AI type of a system. Now, an important point here is that the interaction effects come into play. If we had only the customer and the business user, we would never be able to achieve the scale. Let's illustrate this with another example. Let's take this time the example of my own company, The Iconic. The Iconic is one of Australia's leading fashion and sports e-commerce retailers. We stock over 60,000 products and we, sh we launch nearly 200 products daily. Even though I work here, if you come to me and ask me what dress in our product offering would I recommend for your upcoming birthday party next weekend, I would have no idea what to tell you. In fact, scratch that, nobody should take fashion advice from me. But <laughs> let's say you talk to someone who gets fashion. Say you talk to one of our stylists or one of our fashion buyers. Even they would not be able to grok at the thousands of products that we have in our offering and give you a relevant, personalized recommendation. So we get that, right? Humans are great, but we don't scale. Let's go back to another concept art and see how human-centered AI can solve this conundrum. The business user in a HC AI setting can now leverage the interaction effects from the machine by requesting the algorithm to come up with the initial set of recommendations by crunching through all of the data points. This was the same as the traditional AI, isn't it? But there's something different because these recommendations could be way off target and that is okay because the recommendations aren't going to the customer directly. Rather, they're being fed to the business user who can then take a call after sense checking it using her own repository of common sense or her domain expertise. She, based on all of this, she could then take a call whether, that she's, whether she's happy with the recommendations or whether she chooses to leverage any other kind of unstructured information. A domain expert augmented by a suite of intelligent automation tools will not only be able to deliver a higher quality of customer experience, but also to a much larger number of customers per day than she would have had without algorithmic enhancement. Some of you may have also caught another important point that I wanted to drive home here. It is that when you design HCAI, you're not really designing one algorithm at all. In the same way that you wouldn't find a human being with just one skill or one expertise in their whole life, it doesn't make sense that the intelligent automation that supports these human experts should be designed, should not be designed as a whole suite of tiny intelligent automation tools. Back to that retail example, imagine having one small algorithm that is specifically figuring out what's the right level of summary to be presented in front of the business user to get the right kind of outcomes. Another small algorithm matching the right business user to the right algorithm. Another, another small, uh, a tiny algorithm trying to leverage and learn all of the interaction feedback from the user in terms of their clicks and likes. 
each of these small algorithms are contributing to the overall system independently. But when you have these tiny little, tens of these tiny little worker bees running around within your systems, if things are not designed properly, you can probably begin to understand that things will get out of hand really quickly. Lucky for us, in another realm of technology, within web development and software app development, a new type of design architecture is slowly gaining traction, actually rapidly gaining traction, which incidentally works really well for HCAI. And this is called microservices. So what are microservices? Microservices is a way to design software applications where each task is broken up into a number of small but independent tasks which talk to each other using some kind of a consistent interface like an API. A useful way for me to think about microservices really is the spell checker app that you're all probably used to. I see the spell checker as a microservice because it does one thing and one thing very well and that is to check for grammar and spelling. It is quite independent of the document that you're trying to feed into it. In fact, with minimum modification, it can, you can argue that this service would work even for a PowerPoint presentation as well as an Excel spreadsheet. You give it a clearly defined bunch of input, which is the text that you want spell check, and it abstracts away all of the complex linguistic processing within itself and gives you a clear bunch of output, which is a bunch of recommendations that you trust. This way, it locks in all of the value that it provides almost entirely within itself. And that makes, that, that makes, that makes it really easy for you to interact with the <coughs> system itself. I see this type of communication through APIs as a metaphor for how AI, and specifically human-centered AI systems, to be interacting with their domain user. When you abstract away the complexity and show useful summaries to your everyday expert, that's what's going to help them scale in a better way. So at the Iconic, our tech and our data teams have fully embraced the microservice architecture. And we are embedding intelligence into the way we target our customers, but also we're incorporating that in specific product features. But to give you a tangible example of how a company can successfully adopt human-centered AI. I wanted to share with you the story of a Silicon Valley company who went on this journey almost eight, maybe nine years ago, and not only that, but made it the very backbone of their business model. This gambit was almost unheard of at that, uh, back nine years ago, but the gambit paid off, and, the, and this startup went public nearly two years ago in the US. This company is called Stitch Fix. Now, while Stitch Fix is not really a competitor to the Iconic, they're also a fashion retailer where customers receive an ensemble of men's and women's dresses to their home. The biggest difference in this, the biggest difference is that the customers of Stitch Fix don't get to pick a single item that they receive in their, in their, in their uh, box. It is 100% picked by a recommendations algorithm. And this recommendation algorithm is a human-centered AI. The way they do this is in two stages. Stitch Fix has a globally outsourced network of nearly 2,500 everyday experts who are fashion stylists. But to achieve scale, the company has tens, if not hundreds, of intelligent algorithms deployed as microservices each one performing one tiny little task to enhance and assist the human stylist. For example, one algorithmic microservice crunches all of the data that they have about the, uh, about the inventory that they have and matches it to the style of the customer to give them uh, an initial set of recommendations. These recommendations are curated by the human stylist who then exercises judgment but also looks at the client's needs holistically. They could look at all kinds of disparate information, such as any Pinterest boards that the client has shared, but also heartfelt requests like this one. Handling this type of information is exactly where the human stylist shines. This winning combination 
of customer experience has led to revenue, growth, and profitability for the company without really sacrificing too much in terms of scale. And that is the goal of human-centered AI. All right, I guess I've packed a ton of information in these 20 minutes so far. Let's take a second to reflect on what we have covered so far. We spoke at length about a relatively new way of designing artificial intelligence systems called human-centered AI. These solutions are better suited for customer problems involving direct human interaction uh, and a direct customer impact. We discussed about how traditional AI systems are more linear in the way that they mimic and observe the human behavior if, in order to replace them, but HC AI, our human-centered AI, is all about introducing circularities and feedback loops between the customer, the everyday expert, and the, and the AI algorithm. With regards to practical applications, we saw in detail how Stitch Fix literally bet their entire business model on HC AI and ended up reaping the benefits. A number of, uh, a number of companies in, in uh, Australia are also building product features based, based on this paradigm. And finally, we spoke about microservices being the best architecture for designing HC AI into your business. Don't go about building one monolith of an algorithm that would solve and optimize for your overall customer profitability. Instead, architect your HC AI as a suite of intelligent automation solutions. So finally, I wanted to re recall you recall what I said at the beginning of my presentation when I said that humans and machines working together are a fantastic combination. When it works, it works great. Your customers will love you for it. Your staff will love you for it. It's hard in a number of ways, though, because it's not a passive process. And quite frankly, working with AI is not a passive process. But if you and your company truly believe that automation with AI is not just about reducing costs, if you believe that using AI, you can leverage your staff to do what they do best, but only to serve more customers in a more personalized way and even better. If you truly believe this, then human-centered AI is something for you to embrace. Thanks for listening.